Hi! As we continue through this course, we'll build more complex circuits with multiple components that must work together in order for our programs to function correctly. In this lesson, we'll learn some practical tips to debug our circuits and programs so that when an issue arises, we know the steps to take to fix the problem. If you've programmed before, you've likely heard the term debugging. This is because no matter how advanced a programmer you are, it is inevitable that bugs or problems will end up in your code at some point. Debugging is the process of fixing these problems so that your program functions as it should. We call these issues bugs because in 1946, an actual moth got stuck in a relay machine and was causing it to function incorrectly. We now use this term to refer to any problems or issues that exist in a program that causes it to malfunction. The main process for debugging looks something like this. We see that something is broken in our code or the functionality of our program. We create a hypothesis about what could be broken and why. Then we try to fix the problem, and if it works, great, we're done. If not, we go back to step two and make a new hypothesis about what could be wrong. This process cycles through until our program works as intended. You may already know some tips for debugging programs, but let's quickly go through a few options. The first thing that helps make debugging easier is writing readable code from the start. This includes adding informative comments, using explanatory variable names, and modularizing your program or breaking it down into smaller parts. Looking through example programs and using documentation and resources is also a great way to navigate through issues in your programs. Compare the syntax and use of certain commands or structures in a program that you know works to help you find out why yours doesn't. On CodeHS, you can find the documentation in the Docs tab in the editor. Most programs we develop will perform multiple actions. Using comments to section out your code and only run through it bit by bit will help to isolate the problem, which will make it much easier to fix. With the addition of physical circuits, debugging programs can get way more complicated. Let's look at a few ways we can debug our physical circuits. First, double check all the connections on your breadboard. If you have an image or step-by-step -step directions to follow, revisit this resource to make sure connections are where they should be. Also, make sure to add components to your circuit one by one, instead of adding them all at one time. Then, check all the ground and power connections. Are all the wires that are connected to the ground rail correct? What about those connected to the power rail? If possible, it can help with organization if every wire connected to the power rail is red and all wires connected to the ground rail are black. Next, check all the connections on the inside of your breadboard. Remember, all ports A through E and F through J in each numbered row are connected. If you have a component plugged into an A through E or F through J port, make sure that there is also a connection in one of the open A through E or F through J ports in the same numbered row, because this is the only way the connection will continue. When using specific components, there are some tips to help secure connections as well. LEDs only work in one direction, and it is very easy to mix up the placement of the long and short legs. If you're unsure, Pull the LED out and switch the placement of the legs by turning the LED around to see if that fixes the issue. Resistors are very fragile and have long, flexible legs. This can sometimes make it difficult to push legs fully into the breadboard ports to make a full connection. Pull the resistor out of the port and carefully insert it again, or trim the legs to make it easier to connect to the needed ports. At this point, the only sensor we've looked at is a potentiometer, but we will continue to add many more as we work through the course. Many of these sensors have multiple pins that must be connected in a specific way. For example, the center pin of a potentiometer must be connected to the Arduino signal pin in order to function correctly. Be sure to double check these pins and their requirements to be sure that they are all connected in the proper place. In this lesson's exploration, you'll be using the serial monitor to debug some programs. This is a very helpful tool that can be used to print the value of different components at various times throughout the program. For example, if you are using a distance sensor and you expect it to be reading the distance of an object 10 inches away, and it is constantly providing a value of zero in the serial monitor, this can signal that something is wrong with this sensor, 
either in its connection, its programming, or the sensor itself. If all else fails, a good way to check if you have a faulty device is to replace the one you're using with another. Now it's your turn to practice using debugging with physical circuits.